My name is Sebastian Engwa. I'm from Sweden. My in-game name is Oskaka. I play for Navi, and I'm 19 years old. My ID is YM. Oh, Euro Miracle, uh, Love CX. My age is 20 years old. I'm from China. My first opponent is Love CX, and honestly, I don't know too much about him. I basically just know what he played in the regional qualifiers. My first opponent is Osaka. I don't know too much about him, but I think he's better at controlling the game. He's better at controlling the game.在这个对于塔卡组和这个套牌的理解更加的比较深入，而且这个打的时间比较久，所以说就各方面的理解都更加到位。Love CX actually brought similar classes to what he played in the regional qualifiers, so I think I have a pretty good idea of what he's going to be playing, and I actually prepared my lineup well against what he's going to play, so I'm pretty comfortable going into the first match. But I mean, yeah, he's a pretty good player. 那我会说我会。尽全力的去面对并争取战胜他。Love C X versus Ostkaka。Let's do this, Oskaka versus Love CX, a clash between Europe and China. We're going to see whether or not Oskaka can keep up his momentum for the past few months, or will the unknown challenger, I should have said mysterious challenger, should've, should've. or will the mysterious challenger <laughs> featuring a paladin <laughs> be able to take down six different classes once again? I am very excited about this. This is Frodan, joined by Savitz and Brian Kibler from the casting desk. How are you lovely gentlemen doing? Doing amazing. Uh, we are about to see Ostkaka play Rogue, and it's been a while since he's played Rogue. He was very famous for his Miracle Rogue play back in the days. So that was a long time ago. But the Oil Rogue, it's going to be very exciting to see as well. Yeah, fascinating. Yeah, Oil Rogue is a deck that has fallen out, uh, largely out of popularity, uh, or at least had for a long time. But uh, Oskaka is one of the players who played it quite a bit during the Archon Team League. Mm -hmm. uh, and he de was a player who, who did very well in that event, and it's great to see him playing the deck again. That's right. Now, the reason why is because Rogue felt for a long time bullied out of the metagame. However, there are some rogue dedicated specialists. In fact, uh, you know, kind of an unhealthy obsession, if you will. <laughs> they always try to see if they can sneak in rogue. And in BlizzCon, these are the decks you're stuck with. So he is determined to become a world champion with rogue. And we're going to start things off with Warrior versus Druid. So we're going to hold off on those rogue discussions to begin wow. things off. And not only is Ostkaka playing Rogue, but he's also playing Patron Warrior. That's one, right. He, like back in the days when, <laughs> when, when, uh, when the Warzone Commander was still uh, giving minions charge, Ostkaka was definitely one of the best Patron players in the world. He consistently was finishing high on the ladder. I believe he was actually the player who accumulated the most points out of ladder, out of, out of all the players. He got 191 points just from the ladder alone. It's absurd. Yeah, I, mean, I believe he, he was finished in the top 100 seven or eight times, which wow. is, I don't, there are maybe seven or eight months that I actually count it, too. It's, it's pretty outrageous. But, it's uh, pretty scary how consistent this guy is, and it's always a pleasure to watch him play. I think he's an extremely talented technical player, like very few mistakes, if, if ever, to be honest. I mean, he's a player who, prior to, to this year, hadn't really had great tournament results. He's, he was a player who had the respect of a lot of high-level players, in, in large part because of uh, you know, his preparation with them and for his high ladder play, but uh, but now he's here, you know, playing the World Championship. Yeah, Love yeah. CX on the other hand, though, we don't really know too much about him specifically, but we do know that his lineup is one of the most robust in the current metagame. Uh, Drew is very dynamic. Paladin, if you haven't played much Hearthstone recently, uh, I suggest that you don't queue up on ladder unless you really love playing against Paladins. Well that seems to be the overwhelming. Well met. Well <laughs> <overwhelming met>. majority. <laughs> it's kind of like an Annoyotron, except it's Uther instead, but. Yeah. That's right. It's like, no, he used to fight for good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably the most uh, popular uh, ladder deck right now. And the Chinese players and the, and the Asian Pacific players, are all, all, most of them are bringing Paladin, but not the Europeans for some reason. Welcome to the five mana club, by the way. The, every <laughs> single minion either is five mana or averages out to five mana. Let's well, make less four. than that now. Yeah, let's so. make it four. Uh, okay. <laughs> Welcome to the four mana club. <laughs> this is a very, very strong play uh, out of the Druid deck. Uh, Emperor Tharsa in, in some combo decks isn't necessarily a card that you want to play early on, but in Druid, just giving you additional efficiency in all of your minions, making them all cost a little bit less, is extremely powerful. It also forces Oskaka to use his resources to respond to the Emperor this turn. His, his best play is going to be something like uh, the 
the uh, uh, Inner Rage and, uh, and Cruel Taskmaster along with that uh, Acolyte to remove the, the Emperor. That is, ends up being a very it's powerful play good. for Ostaka, though, because he yeah. does end up with the, with the only minion on board as well as drawing multiple cards. I have to say, I think that's quite powerful. I mean, he gets to draw three cards from the Acolyte. That's, uh, that's pretty amazing. You don't often get to draw that much. He does have to spend the Inner Rage, which I'm sure he would love to keep for later on. But there's still the Death Spite, there's still the Whirlwind. I think we might see that happen, but something like maybe Cruel Dust Master and the Slam wouldn't also be yeah. too surprising. Or, oh wow, he's or just going to spite. Fight. So I, I assume that he wants to threaten the idea of patrons to make sure that he's really strong. Plus, you know, the weapon gives him the ability to answer the next minion too. Yeah. So one thing that you have to be worried about is how Drew to follow up the curve. And this will challenge pretty much whatever comes out for four mana. I'm not sure if this was Oskaka or some other uh, very high level of patron player who said, who once told me that uh, there has to be a very, very good reason not to play Death Spite on turn four if you have the opportunity to. And uh, in this case, he, he thought Where that uh, yeah. it was not that necessary to play it. Yeah, so love CX I mean, the, the, the Druid in cat form here, allowing him to charge that uh, that Acolyte down, prevent Oskaka from getting more than one card, which is a pretty, if he played it in bear form, it would still die to the, the Death Spite, Death Rattle, uh, as right. well as the Acolyte attacking, and Oskaka would get an additional card. No, yeah, definitely good to deny those extra cards. But Oskaka showing another battle rage, but he doesn't really have an opportunity to use it very efficiently just what yet. No. Interesting. Uh, Oskaka does have the slam here, and he can potentially use the slam plus cool Taskmaster to just remove this from the board. And oh there's the Grim Patrons. Everyone might get in here next time. So this is this is why Oskaka has been a little a uh, little more conservative, trying to preserve that death spite, trying to preserve. We see he has uh, the whirlwind in his hand as well. So next turn he'll potentially be able to play that Grim Patron. Use the whirlwind and then attack with the death spite and spawn a whole bunch of patrons. You know what happens the following turn too is that Oskaka refills the hand with battle rages. Yep. Yeah, and just everything becomes stronger and you get more cards to fill out your rest of your curve. However, Love CX does have the option to play the low tap here, which would effectively stop the whirlwind from happening. The low tap isn't necessarily a great response. It does prevent the whirlwind on that immediate turn, but the low tap will die to the death spite. It's true. It's a little bit awkward playing the five mana minion into the five damage we weapon because of the death rattle. It's true. And Oskarka doesn't even have to play the patron. Sometimes you have to worry about if you can spend your turn, but he has a follow-up minion with the Pilot Shredder, oh, yeah. which, interesting enough, challenges the board enough because it does four damage to Lothar, which means it dies in the, the, the whirlwind effect from the death fight. Yeah, Oskarka doesn't really have any issues to just, just delay the patrons for one turn nice. if the Lothar is to come down. Which might even be to his benefit if he picks up other cards that synergize for one more mana. For example, Execute now can be squeezed in on se turn 7 with the Patron and Whirlwind. That is certainly going to be powerful. He could go for the Patrons here, but I, I would expect him to get a little bit more greedy with it. I mean, he also, if he just waits, he also has those, again, those Battle Rages as well that, that he can use to reload. I mean, Absolutely. he can even wait significantly longer. It, it Love Six isn't really putting him under a ton of pressure. Yeah, he's just able to use his mana to armor up, buy him a little bit more time to get to that big patron combo. And what's become more interesting, too, is the options widen up significantly with the more mana crystals. On turn seven, uh, Oskaka can go for Grim Patron, execute Whirlwind combinations. On turn eight, he can also use Battle Rage to draw some cards immediately and oh, then wow. refill. So there's a lot of things available to him. Where Love Six in the meantime, he's just drawing minions, which is normally very good. But the problem with drawing only minions is that uh, if the board keeps getting cleared, you're only going to be playing minions into a board full of patrons that can pick up really good trades. And this is going to be a very rough turn for Love CX. Uh, oh, Skaka yeah. has the ability to play that patron, play Whirlwind, potentially even play Execute if he needs to. Yeah, split it into four. Uh, that, that's going to be almost impossible for, for Love CX to deal with. Because the, the way that the Druid removal, the AoE works, the swipe is, is the go-to card at the moment. Nobody right. plays Starfall, really. So swipe deals four damage to the main target and one damage to the other minions. And unfortunately, that one damage is not going to accomplish anything else but just spawn more patrons. That's right. Almost everything of Druid enables more patrons. Force of Nature chunks by two. It doesn't kill the full patrons. Uh, you see Starfall, like you said, swipe, etc. Now, on the other hand, um, he could use Execute, but do you, what do you think about using that. Shredder instead so that Execute can almost kill whatever comes out? What if an Ancient Lord comes out the other end? Yeah, just like, oh, I used my Execute already. Yeah, it's gonna use the Shredder. There oh. Well, it's, a, it's an Execute enabler. There it is. <laughs> at, at least it isn't a Doomsay. <laughs> at least it's not that. Yeah. We've seen that before. I, I remember <laughs> that happening to exactly Ostkaka a, a couple of tournaments ago, like some months ago. Now, on Love CX's end, 
He has Ancient of Lore to try and draw other things, but this is where you start getting a little bit desperate because the patrons, no matter what you do, will pick off a really good trade and then start damaging you right back, and you still haven't dealt with the Patron Flood. Not to mention, they might even copy each other and still keep going for board pressure. Yeah, often Dr. Boom would be a great play on turn 7, but you're facing down Grim Patrons. The Grim Patrons can attack into the Boom Bots and just generate more Grim Patrons. Yeah, it wouldn't work out so well. Love CX going for the draw, trying to find that swipe to go well with the 4-mana Azure Trek to potentially give that a little bit more for the board clear, but didn't, didn't pick it up. And Ostgaga has all the options in the world. Yeah, he That's just right. keeps digging with Battle Rage, drawing three cards here, thanks to the two damage minions and his damage hero. Yeah, probably going to see another Battle Rage. That's right. So with another Battle Rage, well, he, he, can, he can also go for Shredder, which is a really powerful board as well. Yeah, he could. And then Shredder gives him the ability to, let's see. I guess you can still Shredder in. Battle Rage as well. Shredder, Fire Reacts also very strong. He could use the 3-1 yeah. Patron and the Fire War Axe to remove that lore. I don't think there's any real reason to use the Execute just yet, because the trades are already so powerful. So many cards. Yeah. <laughs> if he chooses to play the Death Smite, he could also develop the, the zero mana Dread Corsair. It's true, that, that does give him the ability to protect his patrons a little bit better, because the 3-1 the doesn't get challenged by the hero power. And then that just that, yep. la that Lance Carrier, you know, doing his job, picking one for the team, heading yep. in there. Yep. Not too bad. And Takes now, down that tree. Yeah, now his cock is he's just in a fantastic position here. He has a death spike prime for next turn where he's able to potentially generate additional patrons. He also just picked up an armor smith. Ooh, love CX does pick up the swipe. There is, there's still going to be one patron spawning, but it does help a tiny bit. Kind from, of? from his point of view. It does something, at least. Yeah, it, it does do something. <laughs> it's not that strong, actually. Without without the swipe, he's, he's facing down just so much damage. It's, I mean, it's not clear that swipe is enough, even. Yeah, I don't think... Looking at Ostkaka's hand, that Chromash coming next, and with the Execute for potential taunt, I don't really see a way out. Yeah, if Love 6 does play the Azure Dragon swipe, he will just die. Yeah, but it uh, looks like every other play also results in the <laughs> same thing. Yeah, there's no big taunt minions to absorb everything. Ancient of War used to be one of the things that you could try to look to if they don't have Execute. Yeah. However, it's very optimistic to say the least that you swipe here and expect to survive, considering that Oskaka has so much more ammo as well. That is going to do it. That's right. Oh, the inner, the inner is just to rub it in. <laughs> the interracial rub it in. Oskaka is going to put Patron at two and zero for the tournament so far. Yeah, we've seen we've seen Patron. The actual this card, Grim Patron, win a bunch of games here, and and, yeah. and Gr Grom has been a big part of it as well. They don't have the the big seventy damage combo kill right. with, with Warzone Commander, but Grom ten damage in many cases, it's enough to close things out. Yeah. Father Berserker has been relegated to being a cheerleader on the bench <laughs> to try and cheer on its uh, you know its its sister and Grim Patron, much like that Murloc just cheering Oskaka on from back there. Yeah, so he's got bears and murlocs on his side, fighting over a weapon, apparently. Love CX is going to have to win with all three decks still. Will he change classes? Will he end up staying on Druid? Those are all options available, considering that he has to face off against Mage and Rogue. Two classes that I'm not sure if he was anticipating. Yeah, knowing Ostagaka, the Mage is likely to be a Freeze Mage. The Rogue is likely to be a um, Oil Rogue. I don't really see, it, especially for the rogue. I don't think there's any other like viable options. Pirate rogue. Pirate rogue. Eh? Dragon rogue. Ooh, no, I, like going going I like where you're going here. I like where you're going. It's not gonna happen. The <laughs> dragon rogue. Oh man. Well, I mean, Savis was climbing to legend to it, so it's possible, but not likely. It's not on really a stage like though. this. It's not that serious. <laughs> <of a> deck. <laughs> well, uh, you know, I mean, you definitely know that Oxcock is very serious. His path to getting to BlizzCon in the first place was very challenging. Uh, in the European qualifiers, he had to destroy his teammate in order to get here. Not once, but twice. We got a chance to sit down and talk with Oskaka about that experience and see what he had to say. So I recently got picked up by Navi, and uh, I've always been a good friend with Sixon. We've always practiced, you know, ever since basically Hearthstone was released. In the regional qualifiers, I had to play against my teammate Hoy, so it was a little bit unfortunate that we got matched up in the first round, and I actually had to eliminate him in the last round. So, uh, yeah, it's a little bit unfortunate, but things happen, you know. But things happen, and he's $5,000 richer with potential <laughs> for more. If he goes all the way, Oskaka could win up to 100,000 US dollars and the right to call himself the best for this year. And I think a lot of people wouldn't disagree with that. He's one of the most hyped players of 2015. 
And I remember from last year, Savitz, when we were going to events like DreamHack and other things, Oskaka was always there and, and always a sleeper for the event, but he'd always exit like one round before he would be able to make some real waves, right? Oh, yeah. For example, the Via game, House Cup, I can remember him going a 7-0 in Swiss, and then in the playoffs, he's one game short mm -hmm. there, and also right. Seed Story Cup. Probably his biggest accomplishment. He finished second place. Yeah, he's always been one step short. Yeah. But he is one step ahead of Love CX. Game number two is about to begin. The Rogue makes a wild appearance, and hopefully Love CX can start turning around. Druid versus Rogue, this is a matchup that's always debated. You care to weigh in, boys? Uh, well, the Rogue Experts will always tell you that the Rogue is favored, mm -hmm. but uh, the Rogue Experts will probably tell you that Rogue is favored against basically every deck, That's true. as far as I can tell. Uh, based <laughs> on the statistics, yeah. though, it's, it's fa it does favor this Druid. Uh, yeah. I believe Druid is something, even slightly over 60% in this matchup. Wow. I mean, this is a matchup the, the Rogue deck uses its, its health total as a pretty significant resource, thanks to using weapons as removal. Uh, the Druid minions are all fairly substantial, and not only does it have, does it have the ability to punish the Rogue with uh, sticky minions like Shredder or difficult to deal with minions like Shade. It also has Combo, the Force of Nature Savage or Combo, that can exploit that health mm. loss later in the game. Absolutely. And uh, even though it can be a rough matchup for the Rogue, Ostgaga's starting hand is quite good. The, 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 the while a Teacher Preparation Sap is one of the most mm -hmm. powerful tempo plays yeah. in, the, in the game. That's right. Love CX also got bailed out with his starting hand as well. Getting that wild growth yeah, directly wild. on chat yeah. too. Pretty good. Looking like it's going to be quite an exciting game. And Druid hitting that ramp is not as problematic when you get sapped because then you just play the threat once more. However, that's where the Violet Teacher tokens really start coming into play. Kind of messes up the next turn if he goes for the Coin Teacher prep, uh, but I would expect him to still do it. It's too good to pass it. Yeah, this is a very powerful play. The, the Violet Teacher is going to generate uh, a minion, a 1 1 minion for each spell he casts. So preparation generates a 1 1. Sap generates a 1 1. So now, suddenly Oskaka has three minions to zero on the, the side of Love Ranger. It's such a difficult, difficult minion to remove as well. Swipe only deals four damage. Something like Double Rod could do it, but that's two for one card wise, and it also takes the entire turn. So, not looking so good for Love CX after that prep up. I mean, this is the sort of position that the Rogue really wants to be in. Uh, if, they, if they're forced to use weapons to, to deal with the opposing minions, as we were just saying, it, it's able to whittle down their health total pretty, pretty quickly. And if they, the Druid does make it to the late game, that could be a big problem. But if the Rogue is able to, to get ahead, and it, it has a lot of tools to stay ahead. Absolutely. Shredder <laughs> comes for the round too, but Ostkaka does have ways to deal with it. That Farseer gives him some extra option. He could maybe trade in the one once, use the weapon. Or the the oh, oh dear! Wow, that's a Un little awkward. That's pretty unfortunate for Ostkaka, I would say. Yeah, that is a little. He can use the the Far Singer potentially to heal his uh, <sighs> his uh, Violet Teacher up, but then he's really vulnerable to something uh, like a swipe. Yeah, I mean, he was already vulnerable to swipe, but this makes him even more so. Yeah. Uh, no, the Far Singer is also going to die to it. That is true. The Far Seer does end up dying too. Mm -hmm. However, he doesn't need to. Keep with the growth plus yep. zero power is I plenty. And yep. um, that will mean that Oskaka is going to have to fight back through some of these five mana minions instead. But there are some pretty good ones for sure. And Druid ha doesn't have immediate answers to it. One of the things you're always scared with playing Azure Trick is can your opponent kill it immediately and you lose nothing? You lose everything on board. Yep. Love CX gets the full clear, gets a minion on the board. Now Oskaka has to get the board back. Azure Trick, something. Oh. Okay, not right, quite a back great. step, but still a pretty good gun. Oh, it's fantastic, especially that he has sprint, sprint in hand, and that allows him to refill. Oh, yeah. Two force of natures in the hand. Love CX is very awkward. Has very awkward amount of spells right now, but uh, if he picks up Savage Roar, then all those things become threatening damage. Another Farseer. That's interesting. Uh, just yep. Farseer is a card that that it was played pretty frequently in Rogue decks, then kind of fell a little bit out of, out of favor. Uh, many players would be using anti healbot but the fact that uh, Farseer is not only a cheaper minion, but also can heal your other minions on board, helps it fight for board control rather than just preserve your health total. Yeah, for, for a long time, Ro the old Rogues were not playing Farseer at all, and Ostkaka is not only playing one, but he's actually playing two yeah. of those Farseers. It's really interesting. This I would love to hear uh, about his thought process behind putting those, two of those into the deck. Huh, so he ends up doing the two damage to the face instead of onto the Keeper of the Grove in case if it wants to start trading and tapping. 
So he just wants to go for much more pressure this way and, and try to load up his board. Love CX just picked up Dr. Boom, which is one of the hardest cards for Rogue to deal with. In fact, a lot of people attribute Rogue's downfall to cards like mm. Dr. Boom and Pilot Shredder. Those two cards being the main culprits to why this class is very weak to the current metagame. Yeah. Oh, yeah. A lot of Rogue's ability to gain and, and, and retain the tempo had to do with its ability to, to use things like its, its uh, hero power weapon as well as backstab to remove minions. But when you have minions that either generate additional minions when they come to play, like Dr. Boom, or minions with, death, with powerful death metal like Shredder, it can be very difficult for them to give up. Going for the force from Major. Yeah. The Dr. Boom would have also been very strong, but it does double force of Major. It's pretty nice to get use out of both of them. Alright, holding on to that shade still makes sense. Ooh. Van Cleef! I like this card a lot. Now, Van Cleef, Van Cleef is, a, is a legendary minion that gains plus two, plus two for every card you've played prior to it. And it's one of the main cards that I think people always write off as a real threat because um, early game, it's so powerful. If you can get against Paladin, you can get against Hunter. It's your primary comeback mechanism if you're too far behind. You can just play like an 8 8 Van Cleef, a 10 10, and just try to outrace your opponent. I love it. Yep, 3 mana 6-6, six, six. so strong here. Keeper Ooh. already played. Love 6 does pick up the Savager here, though, which, along with that Force of Nature in his hand, and the minions he's going to be getting from Dr. Boom, <laughs> be pretty tough for uh, uh, Skaka to, to really uh, yeah. really deal with. We yep. actually has 24 ra damage right now yeah. with the combo. It's very close. However, there's Lotheb, so Osaka oh, can stall. He does have both Lotheb and Sap. It's he a lot to ask for, though. This board is pretty yeah. intimidating with no Blade Flurry. Yet. I mean, there are some opportunities. If he gets Blade Flurry, that would be a good way to clear it. Oil, not quite enough. He can potentially use Fan of Knives and uh, attack his his uh, Van Cleef into the Doctor Boom to get rid of that, but there's still two minions on the board. He, he could full clear here if he, if, he, if he really wants to. He would use a lot of his resources. He could potentially use the Deadly Poison and either the Eviscerate so or the Sap. Options. Definitely has some options here, but Ostkaka has to also keep it in mind that second force of nature could be in Love CX's hand in combination with the Savage Roar. And depending on how much damage those boom bots do, it's it, it could actually just put them to 14 life, which could just be lethal. Absolutely. And it's a very tricky situation. Again, you don't want to take too much damage. Um, and he didn't have enough minions on board already. If the Violet Teacher was on board, for example, then this would probably be a scenario where Ostkaka is completely fine. Violet Teacher and Deadly Poison Fan of Knives doesn't look too bad. It doesn't, although again, the, the Boom Bots couldn't mess up the calculations of everything. Yeah, probably going for the Deadly Poison hey, first, spawned at 100. Ooh, okay, so Sap. So Sap, sap. So sap in this raid. It's a choice of removal. Alright, let's see how it works out. So he does end up getting uh, all of the, the cards off before the rope ends his turn, I and hopefully the Boom Bots do absorb. Oh, sorry, the 1 1s absorb the Boom Bot damage. And he does. Right. So that's a really important moment here for Oskaka. And if Lovesyx spends his entire turn playing Whoa. Dr. Boom, then he'd be able to answer it more efficiently. That's a very interesting draw from Lovesyx there. The refreshment <laughs> vendor. So that's that's clearly a nod to aggressive decks. Uh, Druid is a class that, that can somewhat struggle against uh, aggressive hmm. decks simply because a lot of its interaction is relatively expensive. Uh, hmm. Whereas Refreshment Vendor is a reasonably sized body that lets you fight for the board, but can also help you regain some of that lost health early on. Here, not really what he's looking for because he wants to close the game out. No, in this situation, it doesn't really do anything. But in some other matchups, maybe, maybe against Hunter, getting that four extra health can <laughs> buy you the extra time. And here, Love Six using his second copy of Force of Nature yeah, as a, looks like as a removal effect. For no Either that or he's going to go super ham, but I think he's going to remove just because he's really scared about having Rogue with so many minions on board and a Violet Teacher, number two. Yep. But it is his second force of nature, so he's going to have to win um, with just using Dr. Boom, and I think that's where he feels like he can be at his best. He's like, well, he couldn't really deal with Dr. Boom, so maybe if I can just use minions alone, I can win. That's a really big draw, yeah. though, being able to play two minions. Amazing draw from Mostkaka yeah. there. And with that nine mana, he can play the Lotus and play the Violet Shredder, getting a really good grip on the board. Nine and, let's see, nine, eight, 17. If he picks up Blade Flurry, will he have people next turn? I think he will. Yeah, yeah, he picks up. And you run two Blade Flurries, and so there is a chance. Mostkaka's also sprinted through his deck, so it's very thin by now. Could happen. Another fan. That's not exactly what he wanted here. It's a bit weird to use as well because Boombots could potentially kill the Shredder. Yeah. 
So do you attack with the Shredder into the boom first? Maybe you want to use whatever gets oiled. No, that's really a weak mm. play, I think. Hmm. It's very, very tricky. Yeah, it's an awkward spot because Askaka really wants to be able to push for lethal damage, which he needs his minions along with uh, the, the buff weapon to do. But now he's also just in... In, in range of potentially dying. He needs to worry about right. the, the Dr. Boom on the board. And we've, we've seen both Force of Natures, but only one copy of Savage were from Love CX so far. So if those Boom Bots remain on the board, they do threaten a lot of damage. Sure. I guess he's going to use whatever minion gets the, the oil, trade into it. Seems like he got it on that. Yeah, Shredder, because he was queuing it up. That's going straight to that. Ooh. Blue Gill. All right. Interesting. He does end up clearing it. Yep. Let's see where the boom buttons oh, go. Oh, there is Clay wow. Flurry. Four damage on the Lothep. Ooh, that's huge. Yeah, that's really big because now Lothep can't get the damaging guaranteed next turn, which would have been the lethal. Now Love CX can shoot it down with I Keeper. Play Emperor Thorson or another wonder, minion if he yeah, wants to. I wonder if he's going to choose to play the Refreshment Vendor because he has to recognize that Love CX is, uh, uh, rather than Askaka, is in a position where he's trying to burst him down with that weapon. That's true. If there's a time for the refreshment vendor in this matchup, I think this might be. Yeah. So now Skaka does have the blade flurry here to clear the board, but that's that's going to be pretty far from lethal damage because of that refreshment vendor. It is. Uh, I would expect him to place in their hand here. Yeah. He Start off for the fan. Yeah. yeah so play the fan first because he might pick up something that helps him more. Okay. Yeah, still, still, still late, the right? entire yeah. Game. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, it is four damage, which at this stage, oh, six if you count the SI, which is very close to lethal if he picks up uh, another damage spell like Eviscerate. Not to mention that uh, there's also a draw off the Thanos. Yeah, and uh, there could be some like Azure Drake into a uh, an Eviscerate. Oh, done. But the Lothab is going to help close things off the possibilities for Skak a little bit. So mm. that wow. That's not going to do it this turn, and because of because of the Lothab effect, it's going to be difficult for him to possibly combo that. Ooh, well. Uh, do you guys think it's possible that Ostkaga doesn't play any back steps? Uh, uh, I would I would feel that would be highly unlikely because that he has. We haven't seen a back No, I, I'm certain that he has it. It does. It's like one works. of Rogue's Ooh. best cards. Yeah, but I mean, what did he cut for the Farseers? I would assume that he doesn't. That's a good question, actually. I mean, he plays two fans as well. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's kind of tough to tell. I mean, Vax is such a powerful tempo card. Oh, there we go. There okay. We go. <laughs> okay, I, get, I think that answers it. <laughs> well, it looks like Oskaka is just going to end up backstabbing and blade flurrying here. Has to clear the board. And here, he's just kind of running out of resources. That's right. He's using all of his tools to clear this board, but as we see, Love CX has more minions in hand. And the fact that Love CX's hero power outpaces the rogue hero power mm -hmm. means that Oskaka needs to find something like an Azure Drake to help reload his hand to really get him in a position where he can compete. He's almost out of cards. Look at his deck, how thin it is. Oh, wow, yeah. One of those, car one of those cards, I believe, is a second sprint, too. So That's right. <laughs> he, he's actually kind of in danger of possibly running into uh, fatigue here. Sprint is the Ooh. last card. That's Sprint so is the last awkward. cards, and you know what? I think maybe he's also thin on the four mana minions. There's a lot of like mm -hmm. belief that maybe you 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 completely push that curve with pilot shredders and pilot teachers. I would imagine those cockas pretty thin on. So here, I have to imagine that Love Six's thought process right now is: Okay, can I die this turn if I don't hero power? How is this game going to progress? But it, it looks like he he you know, recognizes that uh, oh. much of Oskaka's damage is gone. Well, that's Doomsayer! <laughs> that's the last and that's, that is, Nothing in fact, else. what he is looking for here. Nothing else will help, help us to go out here. I and, oh, I what? guess it's not a Doomsayer. Uh, <laughs> no! That, we didn't get to we'll see! Never know. <laughs> we'll never know what came out of the Shredder. But I love this Shredder. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> lo Love CX, uh, he manages to even the match up one game to one. That's right. A very important win for Druid, but that's something that Druid does so well that it'd be surprising to see Druid lose two games in a row, potentially even get sweeped. So, love CX being able to get a very important win here. And now we go into Paladin Warlock versus Mage and Rogue. Is Rogue one of the answers to Paladin, too? Because it is access to a lot of AoE to destroy the board, and Paladin with Muster for Battle, people complain they can't really fight against it, but Rogue has one of the best answers immediately It to could it. be. Uh, we saw from Ostkaga, he had two Fan of Knives, two Blade Flurries. Those do a lot of work against the Paladin minions. Yeah, I have to imagine that Love CX is, is kind of worried about getting a win with his Paladin here. If his Paladin is 
let's say it's it's mid-range paladin which is probably less popular but it, it's almost impossible for mid-range paladin to beat freeze mage a lot has to go right assuming that's freeze mage and the the rogue matchup is very tough as well yes it is true however um it, it's not it's not completely out of the question right you said it's it's not very it's, difficult it's, it's hard very to... difficult but <laughs> you said it's not impossible which is the keywords there yeah. mm -hmm. and that's certainly a possibility for sure to see if love cs can continue to go all the way we're gonna take a quick break and get to know love cs a little bit more when we come back we're gonna have the third game of the series ID love 呃，模特，然后我之前呢，就是比较的这个喜欢和这个关注这个陈潇。如果赢得了布雷斯布雷斯康的冠军，我可能会呃更多的去留和请陈潇吃饭。What a gentleman! First dinner, then a movie, and who knows? If he becomes world champion, I'd say yes. Why not? Maybe play some Hearthstone <laughs> while we're at dinner as well. We can, because we have iPads and whatnot. Yeah. So Love CX uh, wins in a very important game number two here up against uh, Oskaka. And you're talking about the mage, you're talking about that rogue. What about the warlock? What kind of dynamic does that throw into this series here, Savitz? It's really tough to tell, because we don't know if Love CX is playing the hand lock or demon lock or maybe zoo. It could be anything. So it, it kind of depends on that. Something like Zoo is not very good against those Kaka's lineup, and there we see the Zoo. There it is. Yikes. But the deck card is low temp, so that definitely helps against oh, yeah, Freeze Mage. Huge. If he knows it's Freeze Mage, I if he's done his research, he'll know. Yeah, the information I have to is the, there. I have to mention the players have done their research. Coming into an event like the World Championship, you have to look and see you know, the, the, the Mage decks that Oskaka has played in the past, and he is a player who has played a lot of Freeze Mage. Not, ma not maybe as much as, as Tice, who I literally see Mage in the lineup from Tyson, like, that is Freeze Mage 100%. <laughs> I'd be shocked if there's anything else. It's true. And he does end up keeping it, so very sharp senses here. Love CX not going to forget what he's prepared. Uh, he throws away Doom Guards, gets a second Doom Guard. That's kind of what happens usually, right? That's kind of what Mulligan does. <laughs> yeah, I believe, it, I believe it is shuffle this card into your deck, put it back in your hand. That's right. Or draw it off on turn one. So Oskaka keeps Doomsayer because he knows the possibility of Zoo being very high. Ends up throwing back some of the other things because he wants Mad Scientist. He wants some early early game plays like Loot Order, for example. Yep, good call from Oskaka. The Doomsayer, not that efficient against the, against the Handlock. You, d you definitely would want to prioritize the card draw over that. He's got the Frost Nova Doomsayer combination, which would be very useful later on. Love CX in the meantime has two Imp Gang bosses. Some of the most annoying minions for Freeze Mage to deal with because the more you damage it, the more minions come out. Yeah, Love CX did miss the turn one there, which is a bit unfortunate, but with the coin, turn two Imp Gang boss into turn three Imp Gang boss is well, maybe the, the strongest thing possible. The Imp Gang boss is definitely uh, much stronger than playing, say, that knife juggler there, which would just <laughs> yeah. die to the loot order. Not really what you yeah. want, but it looks like uh, Love CX is going to... All right, he does, he does it. Rather than playing the Imp Gang boss, decides to look into shooting that. And gets the juggle, that's very good. All right, and he is going to start loading up the pressure. Knife Juggler, uh, one of the more dangerous cards in Zoo, specifically because you want to minimize taking damage on your turn as a Freeze Mage. A lot of times you can freeze the board, but even if you play Blizzard, for example, and like the Knife Juggler will get one or two more damage before it dies, and that might kill you if you're at low HP. Oh, yeah. Ostkaka with the Doomsayer Frost Nova available to him right now, but he only has four mana, so this is not going to be a time for that just yet. Love CX missing that Iron Peak Owl for, for the combo, but he does have the Nerubian Egg, and that gives him a little bit of counterplay. Yeah, Oskaka would really love to be using these early turns of the game to uh, be drawing cards with things like Act Like Pain or Arcane Intellect, but his hand is just full of his, his actual action spells rather than anything that allows him to, to develop at this point. Oh yeah, Ooh. that turn right there was where Oskaka wanted to Arcane Intellect. <laughs> yep, oh well. And here, uh, Love CX getting ready for the Doomsayer. He's getting ready for the yeah, Crossover Doomsayer right. by loading up the board with Death Rattle minions. So even if Oskaka does use his next turn to Frost Nova and play Doomsayer, Love, it, Love Ooh, CX will. Oh, good. Uh, yes. One turn too late, but it's still good. It's pretty good still. He gonna, is he going to go for it? Wow. Yes. Immediately, so that way he can shut this yeah, down. Yep. And by doing so, like you said, it's going to spawn some minions, but he still has a follow up Blizzard. Right. Yeah, things get too no dicey. Yep. I think Frostbolt Arcane Intellect would have been an, another option. Only Love CX would have only had four power on the board afterwards, mm -hmm. but the Doomsayer Nova. Like, that's a powerful move. How can you say that? Yeah, big moment indeed. You know, Skaka 
can even continue to draw and then Frostbolt the 4 4. Or if he wants to keep Frostbolt, he can Ice Lance. We've seen some players use that. Ooh, that sign is pretty good. Very liberally. Yeah, he's still at 28 health. He's not really in a position where he has to be neutralizing the minions every single turn. It makes sense. Yep. Both of the ice barriers are gone, but that doesn't really matter all that much. He has access to, to the heal, but if he somehow drops low on HP. So now we're coming into some cr pretty crucial turns. Lotheb timing is one of the hardest things that you have to really gauge, and there's generally uh, an idea of two schools of thought with Lotheb. The first is either you play it before turn 8 or you play it after turn 9. Because turn 8 and 9, Freeze Mate still has a lot of answers to Lotheb. On turn 8, they can just Frost Nova the board, for example, or even play a secret and just stay alive. On turn 9, they're probably going to play Alex Straws or something yeah. else. Uh, and then they're not using spells anyways. So you have to be very careful with how you time it. This is actually like one of my, maybe the favorite turn for Lotheb in my books. Because at 7 mana, there's no way that a, for something like a Frost Nova can happen. Because after the, after the after it gets more expensive, it would be 8 mana. So if he was to load it on the following turn, then Frost Nova will just negate the effect completely. True. All right, but Lothar looks like he wants to build up a big minion with his Void Terror. So that's going to be a gigantic Void Terror, but Oskaka does have the Blizzard and the Ice Lance and the Frost Nova to keep that from <laughs> really getting to do very much this game at all. Yeah, a lot of options for him. Yeah, so normally that is uh, a really powerful minion. 11-9 is one of the strongest minions in the game, uh, only only trumped by Thaddeus and Deathwing. Oh, yeah. I, w I was actually wasn't even thinking about Thaddeus. Good call. Yeah, Good call. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> there's actually a full clear available Frost Kaga here. If you wanted to go Frostbolt, Ice Lance on the Void Terror, trade the Scientist into the Nerubian, play the Sheep and ping it. But Frostbolt, Ice Lance might be something that he wants to hold down and use it on phase later. Mm -hmm. Well, he could also just potentially blizzard leave that guy frozen yeah. and yep. I mean, he, he does have the blizzard and the uh, and the frost nova and the, the frostbolt as we were saying to keep the guy neutralized for a long time if yeah. he wants to the love cx does you know will be able to deploy additional pressure as well oh, yeah, it looks like he's going to go he's for the clear. going for it yeah. wow i wonder if it's because he wants to set up an opportunity to play antonitis or something else uh, and make sure that not only is it threatening um you know, because of it's like it's, a, it's it's got fireball potential because it's a five seven. It's not going to be easy for Zoo to remove that at all. Yeah, it's definitely a major factor in uh, in making this play. Having that Antonidas, he knows that he will have access to getting that additional direct damage, and he won't be reliant on on the Frostbolt and the Iceland. Also, one of the very amusing things is as the game gets drawn out, even though Oskaka's used some of his direct damage, Zoo does lower its health naturally right. for you. So true. maybe you don't have to Alex Straza aggressively. You can just Alex Straza yourself, and then, oh, he's at 17 health, 16 <laughs> health. I'll just kill him. I mean, he kind of just uh, flame him to his own face for three. So. And, <laughs> and, like life a and, yeah, life and a life tap. And a life five Sorry. damage. A lot, well, lot of blowback. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. You don't want it to get too high. <laughs> no. Is the Antique Heal about to play here? If you Antique Heal bot, um, you don't really have to do much else, right? You can just kind of ping through and set up. So that way, yeah, looks I mean, he's going for, though. the big trump card is when you play Antonidas and Frost Nova, and then you guaranteed lethal, because not only will you have uh, you know, a big minion that can't get destroyed immediately or silenced, um, you also have Fireball to potentially end the game, and you won't die because you have Ice Block. So this is usually a trump card on turn 10, and Love CX has only two more turns to try to do something about it. Yeah, I mean, here, uh, Oskaka, he's still at 24 health after that heal bot. He is extremely healthy. Ooh. Ooh. That's not I actually very good. I actually don't think he wanted a 4 there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because now he doesn't have space for Lothar. Although, Blizzard will kill some oh, of those minions. There was one barrier. Okay. Yeah. Oh, oops, I apologize. I thought that was Ice Block for I thought it was so as well. Right. Well, it's actually kind of interesting here. So, Oskaka can potentially Blizzard here. That would That would open up the, uh, the the opportunity for Love CX to play his Lothab. I, I kind of like just going for phase. I mean, Fireball, Frostbolt being the board is full. There's no way Love CX would have enough reach to end the game. True. For turn yeah. 10, Archmage Antonidas into Frost Nova. Again, the board is full. Mm -hmm. He's also used Power of Overwhelming number one, so you know that his damage potential is almost nothing. Uh, he would have to do something extremely absurd in order to be able to secure it. Because you also play around Malganus in turn 9, mm -hmm. and yeah. that's also a possibility. So this is a very strong play here, suggested by Savitz, and of course recognized by Askak immediately. 
He's keeping his options open even more in case he needs Frostbolt to stall. So this is a very conservative play, which is completely appropriate, because if Antonidas can just get one fireball, this game will be over. I love CX completely helpless here. There's nothing he can do in this situation. Doesn't want to tap either. It is pretty funny that his implosion rolling four <laughs> right. was actually a drop. Sabotage. It's interesting. Yeah. <laughs> it's very interesting there. That's right, because you know, implosion for four is what often causes people to roll their eyes. They're like, well, <laughs> if it rolls four, I lose the game. In this case, uh -huh. you are correct. It rolled four and it lost you the, a game. The person who ended up playing it. Yeah, and, and Askaka perfectly setting up the ability to oh, just end no. the game. And there's nothing left CX can That's do. It. He, he is locked out by his own minions. Unless that card is Twisting Nether. And, and even wow. then, he's not going <laughs> to do it. Well, yeah, that was out taking game three. Yeah. So it's a really interesting uh, interesting situation coming up that game. Oskaka <laughs> recognizing correctly. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go right in your face. <laughs> Quite unfortunate for Love CX to also draw Iron Beak Owl uh, as his very last yeah. card. That is the dagger in the heart for like, <laughs> no, where were you earlier? <laughs> That's why you always RSVP ahead of time. <laughs> so Love CX, he knew it was Freeze Mage. He had Lothab in the opening hand, and yet he still couldn't stop that. I think a couple of decisions, uh, interesting turning points that you mentioned. Was there an opportunity to squeeze in Lothab earlier? Absolutely. Would it have changed the outcome of the match? Who knows? We could always talk about the implosion rolling for four and definitely being the worst of all cases there. Um, but again, even if he, ro he got Lothab down, uh, would he have been able to survive, right? Mm -hmm. Would he be able to kill his opponent before the fireballs come? Very hard questions and very difficult answers. I'm going to look forward to see what's going to be happening. But before we go into our next game, we sit down with Oskaka, talk about his friends and family and all the support that he had getting to this point. Let's see what he had to say. So my family, they were a little bit questionable at first. You know, obviously esports is new to them. But after some explaining and, you know, like people flying me out to different parts of the world, you know, now I'm qualified for the world championship. So that's a big deal. I mean, my friends are pretty uh, interested, of course. I mean, they really, really think that it's cool that I'm traveling and doing all this cool stuff. You are cool, Los Kaka. You don't need anyone else to tell you that. <laughs> you have three people who agree with you. At least. At I'm least. sure some people out there who are watching right now agree that Los is pretty cool. Yes. At least, also at least three. Yes. <laughs> oh, Los Kaka being Swedish for cheesecake, because otherwise that could be weird. Thank you, Kim. <laughs> <laughs> for clarifying that. Someone out uh, there probably didn't read the little placard that was up there before. Correct, I'm just saying. Correct, I'm just correct. saying. Yes, you're absolutely right. <laughs> Thank you for framing it in context. <laughs> Oskaka needs to win one more match to advance to the winners. We're going uh, one match per group, by the way, today. We're not necessarily determining who's going to be playing who. You might have seen the previous winner of the series. Uh, you, but, you know, Kranich is not guaranteed to play Oskaka, for example. That will happen uh, as the days unfold. We're going to do four days, four groups, and eight players go on to the next main event. Yeah, pretty cool. Yeah, in this uh, this game, we, we have Oskaka. He still needs to win with his Rogue deck. The Rogue deck is, is one that, you know, as you were saying, is a little unusual. Not that many people bringing Rogue. So he does have uh, what are generally some of the better matchups for it, though. That's uh, right. Paladin and, and Zoo here. So That's true. Team. And uh, I said uh, before the series started, I want to see Ostkaka play Rogue, and we're going to see it at least uh, a yeah. second time, maybe even third. <laughs> For his sake, I, I hope not a third time, but uh, <laughs> he's, he's definitely in, uh, in good shape to take down the series. Yeah, Rogue is, again, a class that benefits off of a lot of those early game tempo plays. Against Zoo specifically, when they put out Flame Imps and Knife Jugglers, and you use Backstab and SI7 Agent to control the state of the board. That's really devastating to their early game pressure. And then if Rogue can stabilize, they can't really answer some big tempo plays. You played Void Caller or Void Terror and get a big minion, and then they sat. Right, it's exactly. like, well. It, similarly, Paladin is, is, is a deck that, that revolves around developing a large board presence. Both Zoo and Paladin are very similar in that respect. Uh, they, they are built around uh, playing out minions, sometimes buffing those minions, sometimes, you know, whether it's with something like Quartermaster, it's something like Defender sure. of Argus, uh, and the combination of those cheap tempo uh, effects like Backstab, like Sap, along with board sweepers like Fan of Knives and Blade Flurry sure. really punish that kind of strategy. Yeah, it's as good as it gets for Rogue. Those matchups are exactly the ones that you want to be at. Not the ones like Warrior that's just going to armor up for a lot of turns. It's much harder to interact with the weapons unless yeah. you're playing Harry Jones and Double Loses, but even that is not so strong in the end. I do want to highlight that if this is the Secrets Paladin uh, as Rogue, one of the things that's also been helping me climb and a few other people climb too is Van Cleef. It actually is really powerful because a lot of times you want to keep that preparation fan of knives. And then sometimes you make SI7 or you don't really have anything else. That Van Cleef gives you another additional threat that can actually pressure. And Rogue's one of the best classes at dealing with some of those secrets because 
Uh, the way Avenge works, the way Noble Sacrifice works, the hero power interacts with it very favorably because of deadly poison, etc. So I think there are very good opportunities for Skaka to, to cake this win. Another thing I want to also bring up is that China uh, used a lot of mid-range Paladin or defensive slow control Paladin to qualify for BlizzCon. So even though we do see Secret Paladin in the West a lot on ladder, that might not necessarily be the case uh, for Love CX. There is a possibility that's mid-range Paladin. Yeah, I, I've actually been playing a, a bit of mid-range Paladin myself lately, sure. and I, I, I do think it's a deck that's pretty well positioned right now, uh, because of the the change to the Patron Warrior deck. You were the, the mid-range Paladin deck is a deck that is able to deal with these board presence decks quite well, thanks to things like Equality, Consecration, and just solid minions. Whereas it was constantly just dying to huge amounts of burst damage because exactly what it wanted to do was put a bunch of things on the board. Back in the the era of uh, of Warsong Commander. How have you been doing against rogues? Have you played any? I actually have, have not played against any rogues uh, playing Paladin. I, I, I don't even remember the last time I played against a rogue playing Paladin. <laughs> yeah, it's not that popular on the left. Right? If true, you said you did, true. I wouldn't have believed you, and I would have demanded <laughs> a selfie in order for, to get some proof. But, uh, you know, rogues are pretty uncommon on ladder for sure. Every time I've seen a rogue, um, they've also been just bullied by, like, Control Warrior and, and other classes that naturally predate on it, like, like, you know, the aggressive hunters, for example. That's a very tough matchup for rogues to deal with. And if there's already classes that are hard to deal with, even before Patron Warrior and all these other dominant classes were around, you know, how, how are you going to interact here? You're in a very, you're caught in between a rock and a hard place with decks that kill you and decks that you're kind of okay against, but you can play something better. And that's always been rogue's biggest weak, uh, weakness. I mean, one of the interesting things about, about rogue, because it, it is so, uh, or it has so many cards that are oriented to tempo and, and card draw with sprint, and a lot of these low impact but high tempo cards, mm -hmm. uh, you can actually just run them completely out of resources in some games. You know, like you could end yep. up in a situation where the rogue just fatigues himself to death because all they have is a dagger and you just have, you know, a, a sludge belcher and they can't possibly kill you. Yeah. Well, what, what do you think about some of the, uh, the new cards as well? Because it seems like out of all the TGT, or excuse me, all the, all the classes, um, when TGT first came out, Rogue benefited from one of the least. They got cards like Beneath the Grounds, which summons the Rubians if your opponent draws it, or you know, Burgle, which is really, really fun. Yeah, but, how, how uh, but not consistent, to say yeah. the least. Uh, so so w where do you think, is there any room at all for some TGT innovation in, in a class like Rogue? I, mean, I, I think that you can put some of the TGT cards in Rogue decks that are not really like the Rogue decks that we're seeing right now. Mm -hmm. I think that cards like Beneath the Grounds, uh, like Burgle, they're, they're, they're good cards if you're playing a more control-oriented Rogue deck that's planning to go to a late game, not really playing the same tempo style. Mm -hmm. But in that case, many of the best Rogue cards just don't work in your deck. So I, I think that in order for those cards to really find a place in the metagame, there needs to be more support cards for that style of deck. Or if Tavern Brawl uh, lets you play Poison Blade and just completely <laughs> destroy your opponent by you know using Inspire and getting a new hero power every single turn. That was probably one of my favorite moments because I, I did use Poison Blade and I, and I got like a five to six game win streak without losing once. It was pretty sick. Really? Yeah, I did. Because what, what it did was there's a Tavern Brawl mode that uh, every time you used your hero power, you gained a new one randomly. And it was really fun because you could use it unlimited in turn seven and eight. You can have... Uh, you know, six or seven hero powers you have me in lake, and then hit attack and blade flurry. I, I, I played against uh, Mike Donay, one of the one of the uh, uh, designers on Hearthstone. Uh, he he challenged me to a tavern brawl. The first day it was out the, the, that exact one. Yeah. And the first thing he did was turn four astral communion hero power five times. I was like, I oh. I, I think I think you've <laughs> thought about this format a little more than I wow. did because I had like a bunch of just inspire cards That's in my ridiculous. deck and like right. I I, I put Caldera Drake in my deck because I didn't realize you just got new ones every time and I was like, oh well, oops. <laughs> <laughs> did you did you lose that game? I did not win that one. Okay, it was right. and it was well, not remotely close. If, if a great ending to that story is you won anyways. But, no no no, uh, it, it was it was I'll nothing so story. <laughs> <laughs> what? All right, well uh, here we go, guys. We're ready for game number four, and it's going to be Paladin versus the Rogue. Paladin having Quartermaster and Sludge Belcher, which indicate that it's slightly slower than the really, really fast Secrets Paladin, but that still doesn't tell us the full story. It's true. I mean, this this is a hand that is much more indicative of a, a more controlling deck, though I have seen a number of, of, of sort of hybrid style secret slash mid-range type Paladin decks. Oh, gets another Quartermaster. So we know that there's two Quartermasters in the deck right now. It's it's fairly safe to say it's that true. it's going to be a mid-range Paladin. I also haven't seen oh, any secrets hands. yet at all. Although, okay, I will say this. Uh, I feel like some mid-range Paladin decks that uses Secrets as one of its crux with Mysterious Challenger almost have so much variety in the ways it can be built. We've seen it be very aggressive with Divine Favors, and we've also seen like really slow with like you know Zombie Chows, and it's like, well, isn't yeah. that kind of counterintuitive? But then they play very board-centric. So 
There are some very weird lists out there, but I do agree. I think Leon Hands, Quartermaster, and Belcher does indicate it's mid-range. It's so cool when there's uh, many ways to build a build the same deck. Uh, this the all the all the different variants of uh, of mm. Secrets Paladin as well. Like how many how many repentances are there? Some people only play one yep. one competitive spirit. There's so much so many things you can do with those. Very true. That that backstab takes down the knife juggler, yes. keeping pretty much all the pressure that that Love uh, Love CX has. Muster for battle. This is, for unfortunately for Love CX, going to be very easily answered by that fan of knives uh, in Muskaka's hand. Oh my <laughs> goodness, oh, that is really oh, devastating because now Violet Teacher comes yeah. out. It stays and then you prep sprint. Pay attention, what? Class. Yeah, this is this is a great a great sequence of plays for Muskaka here. He's able to again have that play that we were talking about earlier where he's generating two 1-1 one -one minions on the, the first turn his Violet Teacher to play. And Love CX does not have any good way to deal with that teacher immediately. It's so powerful. Love CX missing a strong turn four Ooh. here. All he can do is to shield a mini pot and hero power. Yeah, which gets answered by the board. And the board keeps building up. He's lost all of his 1-1s, one -one, so that quartermaster... Well, he will lose all of his 1-1s, one -one, so his quartermasters won't be able to get value. And it's going to get worse. Actually, he might delay the sprint one turn, just to add some more pressure on the board. Yeah, he could just Deadly Poison and Van Cleef here. Uh, just Farseer, too. Or just I mean, yeah. clear, clear the 1-1 one, one, and pop the Divine Shield. Mm -hmm. Clear the mini, but just Farseer. What that does do is it keeps the Vile Teacher healthy enough, so that way he doesn't die to True Silver Champion, yeah. and he it becomes uh, even stronger as the game develops. It is very awkward on curve, though, and I think for his future turn sake, he really wants to do it. It's true. <laughs> Abomination <laughs> is a card that... <laughs> It is, deals is, two is, damage is when it dies. Stone. Yes, it is a Hearthstone card. <laughs> I have a voice in my head saying that's a card. <laughs> Wherever did that come from? That's right. Going for the bread screen. Did yeah. you know? <laughs> Today I learned. All right, so Lotheb, uh, oh, yeah, Lotheb's going to come down, which will will prevent uh, Ascaga from doing any particularly fancy shenanigans here, but he does have a lot of cards in his hand from that sprint, including right. Azure Drakes that are pretty strong plays into this board already. There's so many things he can do here. Yeah. The Azure Drake, again, this is something that Lothab always has to be considered. Are you playing it in a turn where there's high impact, or are your opponents going to be playing any like things that they would anyways? Which I mean, the problem for Love 6 is he just didn't really have a play otherwise. It's yeah, true. He, he was in a position where he could cast a Quartermaster with, you know, the minions of the board. Quartermaster. 2-5, <laughs> yeah. your turn. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds absolutely dreadful. Well, Skaka is not even begin to touch the tip of the surface of what he can do because oh, he's yeah. got so many plays this and he's got a second refill. This could be a Van Cleef right here. It's a back, backstab and uh, backstab agent Van Cleef. He can make it to 6-6. Six, six. I don't think he can do better than that, though. Uh, not as far as the eye can, can tell. He also can go for a setup with Vile Teacher again, so that way mm. it makes it really complicated for his opponent to deal with the board. Um, also true. Yeah, but exactly. both are possibilities. I think this is the most powerful play yeah. to end the game. Yeah. And as Rogue, what you're always looking to do is to just burst your opponent, threaten with oil, and try to end the game. Yeah, I mean, clearing your opponent's side of the board, adding 9 power, 9 toughness with first 6 mana. That's, not that's bad. pretty good. It's not a bad turn 6. And just took our true heart from Love CX. That's a powerful card in games that are going to go long. This is not one of those games. This is a game where Osaka is just so far ahead, putting so much pressure on. Yeah. It does theoretically potentially answer that uh, that bank oh leaf, but oh goodness. dear. But I, I don't see that actually happening yeah. in the real world. As good as the card is, this is not the place or the time right. for it. So that's 13 damage from the hand if he just weapons up deadly uh, Tinker Sharp Sword Oil. And then you'll have a six damage dagger the following turn. It's not enough because he would have 19 hey, damage. Class. That all kind of pans out. Instead, he's just gonna kill this just card too hard. Continue to add to his board. Yep, makes sense. And this is just so scary. I like Love CX needs to draw a quality consecrate, but he doesn't. He has none of those pieces of those combos. Yeah, he is. Yeah, Tyrion doesn't do anything to sap. Yeah, he has a lot of a lot of cards that are that are that are great if the game does go a lot longer. Uh, that that Tyrion though, it's not even it's not even a real. Roadblock here. Mm, no. you know, Oskaka has such a, a large board, and Love CX does have to be very afraid of just getting returned to his hand for two mana. To, to be wild, Put like, you know, Tyrion is one of the strongest legendaries in all of Hearthstone. 
And yet, here, he's just completely powerless because, sure, he gives you a weapon, but you won't even be able to use that weapon effectively. Yeah. Uh, you might kill yourself by just clearing the minions, and Rogue is nowhere near being threatened, especially by a Paladin that plays slowly. I think this is just lethal damage here. I'm trying to count it, it's at least it's close. Yeah. But it I believe he can just cast... Uh, so many options. He does the Suicide of the Teacher first in the Tyrion. Oh, sure. Think. No, then he, might, so not, the he might have enough damage he does that. Okay. But it's still the, so to make sure that the oil doesn't mm -hmm. land on the... Right. It w does spawn one of the minions before it lands, so it's a two out of five. Oh, or six, and it me. is not. But so is he's not going to have lethal here. Awkward. No, no it's, it's not, not quite, anymore. But it is. It is still a lot of damage. Huh. Just still thinking if, if there was a way, but there probably wasn't. And uh, but in any case, he is still in <laughs> an amazing situation. Yeah. Getting the not a lot of CX down to two H. Sure. Yeah. I mean, um, you know, that's basically still game here, unless Paladin can whip out something, but it doesn't. It just gets big game hunter. Land hands, usually pretty powerful, but here you're facing down way right. more than eight damage. And Oskaka is going to take the game and the match. 3-1 is the score, and Oskaka advances to day number two with a 1-0 lead in his group. And Love CX will have to go back to the drawing board. He's not eliminated just yet. He will play in the loser's match tomorrow. Um, but that's a very good start once again for another European player. So that's two out of three so far that we've seen. He was able to get a strong win. Life Coach, of course, dropping a series to Kranich. Uh, but he can also play again for the next day. Yep. Really cool series there. So a lot of those combo decks coming out from Oskaka. Mm -hmm. Every single deck that he was playing was revolving that's around right. some kind of combo. It's interesting. Oskaka seemed to bring a pretty similar lineup, at, at least in terms of its objective, to Tice. Tice had two of the same decks. He had Patron Warrior and he had Freeze Mage. And it was just the difference of the Dragon Paladin versus the Oil Rogue. But both of the decks very, very strong against opposing minion-based decks. Yeah, it's really fascinating to see how strategy has come together. One of the very few players to bring a Rogue. I really hope Rachel asks some of those questions. We'll find out as she is ready with the winner. Absolutely, Dan. That's my number one question. Oskaka, just tell me everything about the Rogue deck. Uh, well, the rug that goes really well with my lineup, it's targeted to be like Zeus and Paladins, and uh, basically that's what the rest of my line tries to do. So uh, in Conquest, you just need to beat, you know, the same deck over and over again. So uh, yeah, the rug deck is sort of, it works with my lineup, it's synergetic. Uh, it beats the same decks as my patron and my free mage. And uh, give me a little more insight into your lineup. Um, well, that's kind of the strategy, basically just trying to beat out aggressive decks. Um, I'm more likely to play sort of like the Asian players because I can't face people from my own region. So. A lot of those people are playing Zoo and aggressive decks like Paladin, so uh, yeah, that was the thinking with my lineup. And uh, we had a fun fact in the interviews before you started that a lot of the pro players choose you as the probable victor for BlizzCon. Can you tell me why so many of the pro players are rallying behind you? Mm, I'm not sure if I agree with that, but I mean, I, I'm I'm pretty good at the game, I guess. But uh, yeah, I mean, I put I put a lot of preparation into this, so uh, and a lot of people know that. That's why I talked with all the European players and some from NA as well. So. They know how much work I put into this, so maybe that's why. Well, we'll see if that preparation plays off and the pro players are right in their prediction. Thank you guys so much. Thank you, Oskaka. And I'm going to hand it back to the casters. Wow, very humble uh, to have the admiration of his peers and yet stay very level-headed. Oskaka, one of the threats to take it all. You heard it here many times, and you'll hear it once again. Do you guys think he is the favorite? Do you agree with some of those predictions? There's many great players, but Oskaka is definitely one of them, and he has really good chances to go all the way. And uh, the preparation seems to be paying off so far. He had an excellent lineup going up against Love CX. I mean, he's certainly one of the favorites. I don't know if he's necessarily the favorite. I think uh, his fellow European, uh, Tice, is is the at least highest ranked player according to some uh, some uh, calculations there. out there. Yeah. Uh, but Oskaka, you know, he's definitely a very, very strong player and uh, has a very strong lineup for this event. Mm -hmm. All right, well, what, what do you guys think? Let us know, hashtag HWC2015 and stay engaged in the conversation and let us know your predictions and some of your favorite moments as well. Up next, we have Purple versus Pink Pink. Oh, if you love Shaman, it's coming up right after this. want to give a big shout out to all of our sponsors as well, such as MasterCard, Razer, Corsair, and it likes. Uh, make sure to check out all of them as they help us sponsor what we like to do the most. We're going to go to a break. When we come back, we're going to have our last match of the day. But check out these highlights first provided to you by Windows 10 Game DVR.